Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial from visualnights.com. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can easily create a wormhole or hyperspace effect. You can do this tutorial with 3D Max 2010 or older versions or at least as, I know, as far as I know back to 3D Max 9. The end result will look something similar like this. Okay, let's get started. Go to your Helpers menu, go to the Atmospheric Apparatus, click on Sphere Gizmo, and then make a new Sphere Gizmo. Now it's important that you select the Hemisphere option here, and now we have this half uh, gizmo. We're going to turn this gizmo a little bit. 90 degrees to be exactly, so that it, it's nice and uh, well turned on its side. Go to your left view and click on select uniform and scale and scale it. That's right, it doesn't have to be perfect by the way. As you can see we have this uh, really deep gizmo here and that's needed for the deeper depth effect of the wormhole or hyperspace effect. Now that we've done that, go to your rendering menu and click on environment or use the shortcut key 8. Go to the atmosphere tab and click on add. We're going to add a fire effect. Double click on it. First we need to pick a gizmo you can click on Pick Gizmo and then select the gizmo in the field or press H to get the gizmo menu. Select the gizmo and now you can see that we've selected gizmo. Okay, now we're going to play a little bit with those effects. Make sure that your uh, camera or perspective view is, is being watching into this hollow bowel of the hemisphere. We're going to press Render Preview as you can see we have this um, well this fireball which has this kind of uh, spider-like web rigged into it that's because of the tendril option here we change that to fireball the web plant-like strings are, are gone it's more like a blobby mesh whether you use tendril or fireball is your own decision now all these options here well they are actually more of like you have to play with them to get your final result also the colors are something that you just have to play uh, play with otherwise you cannot get the result you really want I'm just going to use some simple colors here I'm going to see what the effect does okay the option stretch is really nice because uh, what this uh, option does obviously it stretches out the image and it stretches out these light uh, tentacles here these these tendrils here so if we're going to set this higher to for example 10 you can see that it stretches out but it's not really big it's it's really small and blurry if we're going to set the irregularity a little bit higher let's say to 5 the light will become a, le uh, a lot bigger that's already better but we still have a really uh, small um, blurry effect we're going to set the sample rate to 50 what this does it creates more of the uh, random uh, lighting rays that are being cast from the middle a higher density uh, means that the fireball itself is going to be larger and therefore emits more light so when we set the density to 30 this this image will become a lot clearer a lot brighter as well but we don't want that so I'm going to set it back to 10 or 15 I don't know exactly what it was the flame size the flame size is actually also the middle of this uh, hemisphere it's it stands on 35 now I'm going to set it to um, sorry 100. Uh, the flame size itself is going to be also very blurry because the higher it is the larger the flame will be 
to cover an entire area of light. So we're going to set this a little bit lower this time and set it to 10. We already have this really nice uh, a lot of random light beams that are being cast at you and, and in the middle you still have this really weird uh, vacuum where the light is being sucked into like some kind of black hole. Now watch out with adjusting the flame detail. When you have a bit of an older computer and you set the flame detail a lot higher, your computer will probably crash. Fortunately my computer is pretty good for these days, so I'm going to set it to 40. Let's see what if it actually adjusts something to this image. You might not see it directly, but there are way more uh, curves in all these light beams and the effect becomes way better. Now, something I'm going to show you is how you create an animation with this. Now, let's say we have a spaceship that wants to go to travel into hyperspace. Now, when it starts, the uh, the hyperspace itself should be real small, the wormhole should be small, so we're going to set the regularity a lot lower. Let's see what it does. Well, that's okay, but it's still it's still too blurry. Uh, there are now too many rays and we don't want that, we want it really to be blurry. So we're going to set the frame, sorry, the flame size to 40. Okay, we have this perhaps unwanted hole here because, but still, a wormhole is something you don't really know what it looks like. So just use your imagination and play a lit with a lot with those values here. Also, the the sample rate is going to be a little bit less, like that. All right. Now, when we go to frame thirty, we want to have different different values. So we're going to set it back to what it once was. Alright, set this back to 50. The regularity goes back to 1. As you can see we have these changing red boxes here again. We had our flame size on 10. Oh, well, that's okay. You can see when you slide the time slider these values are changing. And this is how it looks again at frame 30. Alright, now this entire time warp or wormhole is going to be the exact same, exactly the same the entire ride along. Now, we, how we can. Damn it, lost my mind. Now, if we move the time slider, there isn't going to be any changes in this wormhole, and we don't want that. The wormhole is a bit dynamic. So, what one thing we can do is we can make another wormhole and let that intersect with the current wormhole or we can uh, turn the wormhole a little bit along the animation. So we're going to close this. What we do here, at, from starting from frame 0, we're going to select this gizmo, still autokey selected, we're going to twist it just a little bit go all the way to frame 100 and keep turning this wormhole. Now the wormhole turns itself around and around this is going to affect the entire lighting. This concludes this tutorial on how to create wormholes or hyperspace. Once again you have to play a lot with the values to get your own result as you wanted it. Play a lot with, the, with those colors and play a little bit with the animation keys. Of course, I've used I've used a very short f uh, frame rate here. Uh, I only used 100 frames. Um, that's way too few for an actual good animation. But it's just to show you how this works. Well, I hope to see you again. I hope you enjoyed it, and goodbye.